welcome back. I'm back. Mahogany Sweets. Hit the like and subscribe button if you wish. But anyway, I'm going to go back to what Nick Cannon said about the Jewish people, which means the issues there because they were convert, they were not white blood, um, basically stealing the identity, not being the true Israelites. It's a few examples of stolen identity, stolen identities throughout history that we can prove, can be proven, and look to, to give us a better idea. Because guess what? I'm going to mention three, including the one that he um, was speaking about. And I'm sure that there are dozens of more. Actually, I'm positive there's more. But I will broadly touch on those. Um, let's start first with the Indians, the Native Americans, the copper toned Indians here in America. When Christopher Columbus and his gang got off the Mayflower, um, we know that they had befriended, well, were taken in by the natives, and then later given diseases by those who they had taken in, and then their I and killed genocide had taken place and then their identities were stolen have you ever heard the term called the five dollar indian well if you haven't so you can go do a quick google or youtube search put in five dollar indian or what is a five dollar indian for you to know yourself but i'm just going to give you a um a quick definition of it a $5 Indian came into place in that term is because when they were doing the censuses and figuring out how many natives were left, where they were, and even trying to accommodate them to, um, to try and make amends for their wrong that they had done, they were having them go and sign up and go to these toes, basically, and sign up here. I'm a Native American. Um and get their papers and get resources as we know they get resources such as free college and other benefits that are owed to them their reparations they're getting their reparations and white people here in america wanted to get in on that because they have been the number ones for always winning handouts and stealing things stealing resources and things like that to get what they need instead of work for it so they had went and they would pay five dollars for the person to write them down as a Native American so they could get the benefits um, that were going to, the reparations that were going to be going. Ain't that crazy? All right. You come steal these people land, commit genocide against them, all of that. And then you, you so-called want to make amends for it, but what you do is just give it to yourself. That's why I always be... Always pay attention. Have y'all noticed that even with all these laws and bills that they sign, they dispose of help and aid the people who they have oppressed and used and abused, but yet they find their way to get in there through thievery, through um, conning, um, through conniving, through thievery, so they can still once again victimize their victims and benefit off of them. So they went and they would pay five dollars to be registered as a Native American. And that is where the term $5 Indian comes into play. And that is why now you have all these um, mulatto or or people who are technically white claiming to be Native American and or have Native American in their blood for them to be able to get handouts, for them to be able to steal from the people they were already stealing from. Um, so that's one identity that was stolen throughout history. But now, let's go to the Egyptians. The identity of the Egyptians has been stolen. And no, I'm not talking about the movie where they are trying to paint themselves as being Cleopatra, having a white woman play Cleopatra. But no, they have literally stolen the identity of the Egyptians. Um, Egyptians were of brown and dark brown skin. And this professor who actually came here to my city, to my state, um, he came to one of the colleges here. I believe it was Michigan State um, College or Michigan State University um, College here in Michigan. All oh, right, I already said that part. But anyway, so he came. You can find this on YouTube. 
and he was speaking and he was saying that when he was getting his papers and coming here to America, he had put on the form he was black. And that they told him, those at immigration said, no, you're Egyptian, you can file under white. File under white. And he said that he looked at them and he told them, he said, no, Egyptians are black. I'm clearly black. Because if you go see him, if you look up, crap, I wish I could remember his name. How will you be able to since I don't remember his name? Put in Egyptian you might be able to find him if you put in um, Egyptian professor um, in Michigan or Egyptian professor at Univ um, MSU or something. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't. It'd be hard to remember a name. When I go and do research and watch documentaries and stuff like that um, and talk pieces, I obtain the information. I seldom remember their names. So I can't give you his name, but I know he's a professor, that he came from Egypt, that he's here in Michigan, um, Detroit specifically around here at our colleges, one of our colleges. So, and so he said that he told him, like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm black. And that the immigration person was like, well, no, look, this is how you can benefit if you pit on here that you're white and this is that other. And he said that he refused it and said, no, I'm going as black. I'm black or whatever. So he had went and started speaking about them stealing the identity of Egyptians. Now, this is the reason why they do that. Because it also plays in the effect of not only them stealing identities and reaping the benefits that they can from those identities, um, leeching off of those identities, but it is also to make false data, right? We know that they go around saying that they are the majority um, and that everyone else is minority. Well, truth be told, they actually are the minority. But to fudge their numbers, to make the data look a certain way, they will allow different people from different parts of the world write down for their data log that they are white. And they even for a while will allow them to benefit from the privileges of white supremacy. But then they always come back and check them and snatch it from up under. And if you want to know what I mean, I'm talking about the Arabs. They snatched the rug from up under the Arabs from 9-11. They were allowing Arabs to identify um, in on forms, identify as white for them to flush their numbers. They were giving them certain privileges um, for them to benefit from due to that. But then when 9-11 happened, they turned around and showed their racism to them and said, screw them. Same with Mexicans. They have this term called white Mexican or white Hispanic. Now that don't even make sense, do it? But anyway, you um, they did the same thing with them. They can come, they can file and identify as being white, and then whatever ethnicity it is, white Egyptian, don't even make sense, but also white Mexican or white Hispanic, doesn't make sense, but they allow them to do it and identify with it. They give them the benefits of sharing the white supremacy, and then they snatch the rug from up under them, right? Um, and we know they're doing that with the wall, with the deporting, with them being racist towards them. Um, now and not looking at them as white and then you have these other races being confused the Arabs, the Iranians, the um, Mexicans, the Salvadorians and stuff like hold on no but remember I'm white I practice in what you taught I practice in white um, supremacy um, I adhere to it you have allowed me to benefit from it now why are you turning on me and then they be confused because then they tell them and put them in a place like no you were never white we just wanted you to, to check a few boxes off, join us in oppressing another group of people, another minority, but now we don't need you to do that or you are now going to be our victim and it's wrong. So then you also have the Jewish people, the Ashkenazi Jews, who also have stolen the identity of another people. The Jews, true Jews, had lost the war with the Romans, right? They had ended up losing that war, were scattered, had to flee. The Roman Empire had taken over Jerusalem. It took over Israel and um, some other parts in Africa. And those who they didn't kill, those who they could not put into bondage, um, had fled. All right? They had fled, left their home, um, left their name. The ones who showed up here, they stripped them of their identity, of their language, of their heritage. They separated them from families. Information couldn't be passed down um, of who they were. And we know that it's evident you have the lost tribe out there, right? So, in the 1940s, I believe it was, is when 
this race of people or these people show up and it's real and start going to Israel saying we are the Jews we are the Jewish and all of that so they took a hold and guess what they also received reparations and benefits from it same it's the same pattern here it's the same pattern they destroy and um, harm a group of people then they say okay here we're gonna fix this try and right our wrong and then they infiltrate it for them to benefit from it right so then they receive those benefits those reparations um, receive sovereignty and all of that <clears throat> but it was not their identity identity was a stolen identity you even had in which you can also go look this up you had a leader over there who um, an Arab leader who stated he said I have no problem with the Jews or Israel he said what I have a problem with is that they left black and came back white um, those Ashkenazi Jews all came and flooded from out of Germany from out of um, Rome and from out of those particular European countries they did not come from up out of Africa um, which is where if they were to Jews they would have came from and plus uh, this just tells it all okay so those are three identities of tribes of people that have been stolen through white supremacy um, and the reason why I said that there are others a lot of others because think about this right when you look at brochures, when you look at advertisement, when you look at news or TV shows from other places, right? Places in North America, places in Australia, places um, uh, across the globe, they always present it and show it to you with a white person or a lighter skinned person who looks mulatto. Mulatto just means mixed. Um, who looks, um, have European skin tone or features but if you went to those places and visit them all the other people this is what they are this way if you went to brazil you're not going to see these light mulattoes if you went to dominican public you're not going to if you went to mexico itself you're not going to and what's sad is that even those people the Dominican republic is a number of haitians that were who the ancestors were raped by the spaniards and created this mixed breed and they don't want to identify with their blacker side even though they most of them are dark so the, and I've already talked about this before in a previous video some of them do whitewash you have Mexicans who whitewash you have Koreans who whitewash right if you went into India Indonesia if you went into um, parts of Asia they are brown dark skinned people they are bleaching their skin over there they whitewashing and what white supremacy who runs um, the, the world damn near they are going to put on a front and present to you them in an image that they feel um, serves purpose to them and what serves purpose to them is for the world to believe that they are the majority how else will they stay in power if they have everybody else thinking that uh, on a psychological level and on a numerological level that you're small the truth is no they are the small ones <laughs> and they still identities they um, try to breed out a certain people so they can get their hands in it. And that's also true. If you know of any other stolen identities through white supremacy in history, please share and leave in the comments.